So you want to make a quilt. You've got all these patterns, you've got all these fabrics, and it should be easy just to put them together, right? But when it comes time to cut your fabric, you just can't do it. You know something's wrong, but you don't know how to fix it. So here are seven mistakes that quilters make when choosing fabric for their quilt and the ways to fix them. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And I am getting so close to 150,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate your support by clicking on that subscribe button. Quilters cut up pieces of fabric and then we sew it all back together again. To make all that work worth it, you need to choose fabrics that work well together. But how do you actually do it? The front end of making a quilt is fairly brain intensive. We get so many ideas, we see so many patterns, we say so many fabrics, and they're swirling around in your head. Now, I'm not gonna linger on this stage today, that's for another video, but at some point, you make a decision to move forward with a pattern. And this is a shift from the dreaming phase into the planning phase. And this is where you choose the fabrics for your quilt. And whether you like this phase or you hate this phase, you'll find it a lot less challenging if you avoid making these mistakes. When you buy a pattern, it comes with so much information. Not only does it tell you how many fabrics to buy, but it also tells you what quantity and what shape the fabric should be in. But most importantly, the pattern comes with a picture of the quilt on top, which gives you a map of where the darkest value should go and where the lightest value should go and where are the areas of largest contrast. And all you need to do is to take a black and white photo to see where those values lie. Now, I covered a lot of this step in my color theory series, part four, and there's a free handout sheet that you can download from my website to deal with it. And I covered this specifically for the Meadowland quilt in my vlog, episode three. And if you're interested in seeing either of those videos, I'm gonna put a link in the notes below. Now, I know you're probably rolling your eyes and saying, Karen's talking about color theory again, <laughs> but this is why it's important. You're gonna be putting a lot of hours and dollars into your quilt, and you want the whole thing to look cohesive. And you have to make so many decisions for fabric and value and saturation. It is so much easier if you narrow it down to your color harmony right at the beginning, and you can eliminate all those hues from the thought process. Now, where does this color harmony come from? You might wanna follow the color harmony of the original pattern. You might be making this for a particular person and you wanna choose their favorite colors. But for most quilters, it comes from a fabric or fabrics and we use this as the jumping off point. So it's time to get out your color wheel and it's best to do this in daylight and near a window because we want to identify the major colors in our fabric. For my Meadowland quilt, I am using a fat quarter bundle. My yellow is not quite a pure yellow, but it's not quite a golden yellow, but I'm gonna choose to go with the golden yellow. My orange is a red orange. My green is actually a blue green. And my blue, which is a little bit difficult to tell when it's this dark, but I've got a good light and I'm gonna go with true blue. So this is my color harmony. And if you are just working with one color, what you do is you look on the back of the card and you choose what color harmony you want. The choice is yours. If you don't have one of these, I'll put a link to it in the notes below. A beginner mistake is that we have a favorite color and then we go out and we buy that color over and over again in exactly the same intensity and hue. But when you make a quilt, you need to have a range of saturations. So you can choose a range from up here, you can use a range from down here, or you can choose a range from the whole card. But the point is you have to choose a range. Personally, I keep my fabric stored by color. One container for each hue. And each box 
has a copy of the color wedge associated with that hue. These wedges are from my color series, part three on Color Zone. You can download them from my website. I'm going to pull the box that corresponds to each one of the four colors in my color harmony. For my Meadowland quilt, I need 20 fat quarters. My fat quarter bundle has 12, so I need eight more but I'm going to pull more than that. At least five in each color, so in the next stage, I have choices. I choose lighter ones, I choose darker ones, I choose ones with different patterns. Remember that first step when we took a look at the values in your pattern? Well, this is where we're going to incorporate that. Not all colors are equal in value. Yellows have the highest value, blues have the lowest. So you might be in a situation where you're choosing a dark yellow, but in value, it's still higher than your lightest blue. So this review can happen a variety of ways based on what your pattern needs. The simplest way is just lining them up from lightest to darkest value. When you take a black and white photo of your fabrics, you're going to see whether there's an even gradual change between the lightest to the darkest and have you got the whole range that you intend to sew with covered. You might recall in my beginner Bargello quilt, I had to introduce another blue to fill in a gap in value. If you do have it covered, then you make your selection based on what your pattern requires. If you are making a log cabin, you want a strong distinction possibly between the dark side of the block and the light side of the block. So you will be choosing from the darks and the lights, but you may not be taking from the middle. For my project, the Meadowland quilt, each block has three fabrics. So what I'm doing is I'm dividing my fabrics to light, medium, and dark values. So at this point, we have qualified our fabric. It is harmonic. We have chosen a range of fabrics in the hues of that color harmony. We have a range of values and we want to put them together in such a way that we can see the contrast and how they react with each other. But quilters often fail to look at their fabrics in the sizes that the fabric will actually be cut to. You can use templates, you can simply fold the fabric into the size that you need. By laying your fabrics against each other, you can ensure that you have the contrast that you require. You're looking for that interplay between the fabrics so that the patterns can hold up against each other. You might also see some strong directional elements that you need to consider when you cut as well. And that's why I have pulled more fabrics than I finally need so I can make some choices here if they're not working together. And with this step, we are finally able to make our final choices. And now we're ready to cut, right? We, we can cut now, right? Now the voices start in your head. Maybe you should have used more blue. Maybe I should have used the yellow instead of the gold yellow. Did I get enough dark? Did I get enough right? Do I have enough fabrics? Maybe I should pull everything out and look at it again. Maybe I should consider another pattern. I really hate these colors. I really want to start again. Which leads me to the last mistake that quilters make. Taking that first cut into your fabric can feel like jumping off a cliff free diving. And let's face it, not all quilting decisions are equal. And some people have a harder time making decisions than others. There's no judgment here. That's just the way some people are. But the longer you take to make that cut, the more what ifs come in. If I just stick it out one more day or another week, another month, a better fabric will be available or another idea will come to me and I'll make it even better. That's a dark spiral <laughs> that you can get into and it just leads to projects and bags in your cupboard and bigger and bigger fabric stashes. If you want to move forward, you have to trust in the design. It's why you're making the quilt to begin with. If you've looked at your pattern and you've done the work, you've done the color harmony, you've got the saturation, you've made the values, you've seen the way the fabrics play against each other, 
you're ready. Now, I'm not trying to imply that you make all these decisions in one hour, one week, or even a month. You make the decisions at the rate that you feel comfortable. But once you've made the last one, give yourself a time limit. And when the time limit's up, you need to grab your big quilter scissors, take a deep breath, and cut. I'll be honest. The colors that I chose for my metal lang quilt are so out of my color zone that I had to repeat over and over again to myself while I was making it. Trust in the design. Trust in the design. Trust in the design. And you know what? It worked. Out of 20 blocks, I am so happy with 19 of them. I knew this one fabric was going to be problematic, but I made the decision to keep it in there because it was part of the fat quarter bundle. They work up close. They work from across the room and they especially look good all together. I couldn't be more pleased. And what if you don't like the results? Then you learn from it. I remember watching an interview with Tula Pink when I first started quilting, and she said that with every fabric collection, she learns how her designs work together and how the fabrics interplay. And it's a journey. The more we do, the better we get at it. So I hope this video helps you make better fabric decisions. And remember, you can download any of those handouts from my website, Just Get It Done Quilts. And I will link those videos I referenced right over here. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. So take care and I'll see you next time.